بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers so um, as you remember we finished on this page page 147 of uh, the explanation of the three fundamental principles by Sheikh Salih Al-Fawzan Hafizullah and um, we were going through the different types of worship and we reached this one here. The next type of worship that the Shaykh discusses, he says, Al-Istiyadatu wa Dariluha. So he says, Al-Istiyadatu wa Dariluha. And Al-Istiyada is a type of worship and it means seeking aid or help or assistance and rescue in, 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 a, in a dire situation. So slight, it's slightly different from Alistiana, which is to seek aid and assistance, but this is more specific, seeking aid and assistance and rescue, for example, but in a situ in a, in a dire situation. So that's the difference. The Sheikh goes on to explain in more detail. So he says, Alistiada to Wadalilu, So he says, Alistiada, and it's evidence, he says, Wadalilu Alistiada, Qulhu Ta'ala, Qul A'udhu bi Rabbil Falak, from Surah Al Falak. So he quotes the evidence and he says the evidence of Alistiada of seeking um sorry, made a mistake there. Let's go back. Alistiada, uh I'm getting mixed up between uh, Istigatha. So Istiada is when you're seeking refuge. So let's just clarify that before we continue. So Alistiada is when you seek a refuge. So seeking a refuge. That's what it means. And the Sheikh says the evidence of that is from he quotes Surah. Uh, from Surah Al-Falaq So if we go to Surah Al-Falaq And the translation of that is Say I seek refuge with Allah The Lord of the Daybreak So I seek refuge with Allah The Lord of the Daybreak So there's evidence there Of what Al-Istiyadah means Apologies for my mistake earlier on So al seeking refuge And the evidence from Surah Al-Falaq The first verse So then the Shaykh he says al to so as we know, the Sheikh explains that what the word refuge means. So you know, you're, you're seeking refuge from somebody to repel something from you, away from you, yeah? Uh, and to push something away from you. So, for example, as Muslims, we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, we say, A'udhu billahi min shaytani rajim. Like that. So then the shaykh, he says, نَوْءٌ مِنْ أَنْوَعَ لِبَادَةِ لَا يَجُوزُ أَنْ تَسْتَعِيذَ بِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ فَمَنْ اسْتَعَاذَ بِقَبْرٍ أَوْ بِوَثَنٍ أَوْ بِأَيِّ شَيْءٍ غير الله عز وجل فإنه يكون مشركا الشرك الأكبر وقال تعالى وأنه كان رجال وأنه كان رجال من الإنس يعوذون برجال من الجن فزادوهم رهقا. So then the Sheikh he says so الاستيادة seeking refuge is a type of worship from the types of worship and it's not permissible that you seek refuge in other than Allah Azza wa Jal. So he says, whoever does this, whoever seeks refuge in, for example, uh, from a grave, from, you know, some kind of idol, or anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he is a mushrik. He's committed shirk, and his shirk is the category of shirk al-akbar, the greater shirk, which takes him out of the fold of Islam. And then the Shaykh quotes an ayah from Surah Al-Jinn verse 6, which we just read. So let's go to the translation of that. 
And the translation of that verse is And verily there were men among mankind who took shelter with the masculine among the jinns But there the jinns increased them mankind in sin and disbelief So then the shaykh he says كان العرب في جاهليتهم إذا نزلوا في مكان من الأرض يقول أحدهم أعوذ بسيد بسيد هذا الوادي أي كبير الجن يستعيذ به من شر سفهاء قومه. So then the sheikh he mentions he goes on to say he says the Arabs used to in their ignorance in the days of ignorance the Arabs they used to when they descended upon a place. Uh, and entered a place they would they would say uh, was one of them would say i seek refuge in the chief of this valley for example so if they descended into a valley for example a new place and entered a valley they would they would say i seek refuge um in uh, i seek refuge with the chief or the leader of this valley i.e meaning the the uh, the jinn that is you know, the head of the jinns that are there in that valley, seeking refuge in him or in this jinn uh, from the evil of the their foolish, the foolish jinn that are around them to protect themselves. This is what they used to do. And obviously, no doubt, um, this is uh, Shirk Akbar, as the Sheikh explained in the previous paragraph. So then the Sheikh, he goes on to say, he says, ومبين لما يشرع بدله من نزل منزلا فقال أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق لم يضره شيء حتى يرتحل من منزله ذلك. So then the sheikh he 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 says that the so he quotes from the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he says the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم um said the following um falsifying what the ignorant Arab, uh, arabs used to do yeah in the in in the, you know the uh, from the jahiliya of them yeah um and instead the prophet said said say if you descend upon a place or whoever descends upon a place or enters a place say a'udhu bi kalimatillahi tammati min sharri ma khalaq so you know, you say, I seek refuge with the complete and perfect words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil that is created. So you are, as you can see, the Prophet is teaching us there uh, and to his companions uh, and us as well that we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. And whoever says that, nothing will harm him of a thing up until he m- moves on from that place where he entered so every time you enter a place a new place or whatever it might be you know you say this from the son of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so then um, the shaykh carries on and he says hada huwa al badil al sahih al istiada to bi kalimat laita mati badalan min al istiada bil jin so then the shaykh says this is the correct stance um from what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says is the is the correct uh, it's the the exchange in terms of interchanging or um, using a different phrase. This one that the Prophet ﷺ said, of course, is the correct one. Is seeking refuge in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, of course, uh, rather than seeking refuge in the jinn, which is shirk. Yeah. Then the Sheikh says, "Qala Taala, qul a'udhu bi Rabbil Falak," which is from Surah Al Falak, as we mentioned earlier as well. So then the Sheikh says, Al-Falaq, what is Al-Falaq? He says, He says, Huwa subh wa, wa, rab, wa rabbu al-Falaq. Huwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kama qala ta'ala, Faliq al-Isbahi, Ay, mudhir nur, uh, mudhir nur al-Sabh, Subh, Fi dhalam al-Layl, Min al-Lari, Yaqdir ala, Hada ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then the Sheikh, he quotes, he says Al-Falaq, and if we go back to the Surah, Al-Falaq is the daybreak and then the Sheikh says it is, you know, the morning, the daybreak when the morning starts. And the Rabb of the Falaq is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Lord of the Falaq or the Lord of daybreak is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in a different surah, in a different ayah, in Surah Al-An'am verse 96, Falikul Isbah. So if we go there to that verse and read Falikul Isbah, he is the cleaver of the daybreak. So you see the similar meaning meaning there. Then <coughs> the Shaykh, he says, i.e., meaning that he uh, makes apparent, you know, the light of the day, you know, in the darkness of the light, uh, in the darkness of the night. And and the Shaykh says, who else is capable of doing that except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So then the Shaykh continues and he says, A'udhu bi rabbil falak. I.e., he says, "Rabb al-Subh ida asbah al-Malik al-Mutasarrif fihi al-Qadir alayhi." So, meaning that I would be Rabb al-Falak. He says, "I.e., uh, the Lord, you know, of the morning or the daybreak, if you know when the day enters, yeah, when the morning enters, the king, the owner, the one who takes care of the affairs, yeah, and then." Then you, the Sheikh moves on and he says, Min sharri ma khalak. So from the evil of that which is created, yeah. The Sheikh says, Hada yashmalu shar jami al makhluqat. Yastaidu billah min sharri jami al makhluqat. And the Sheikh says that this, this ayah here, min sharri ma khalak. He says, this, you know, encompasses uh, all of the, of the evil of the creation. So whatever of the creation that is evil, it encompasses all of that. And therefore, we, we seek refuge with Allah from that evil. Then the Shaykh goes on to say, says, هَذَا يَكْفِيكَ أَنْ كُلِّ إِسْتِعَادَةً أَوْ تَعُودُ مِمَّا يَفْعَلُهُ النَّاسِ وَمِنْ شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبُ so, so then the Shaykh says, if you, you know, when, you, when, when we say this, مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقْ yeah? that, And when we read the surah, then it, it suffices us from all of, uh, you know, it's an all-encompassing um, of seeking refuge, yeah, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil, yeah, from, from the evil of that which is which is created, yeah. Then the shaykh moves on to the next, he says, وَمِنْ شَرِّ غَسِيكٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ So if we, let's go to the surah. So we read the first, so we said that from the first ayah, say, I seek refuge with Allah, the Lord of the daybreak from the evil of what he has created and from the evil of the darkening night as it comes with its darkness or the moon as it sets or goes away. So that's the ayah we're on now. وَمِنْ شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ And the Sheikh says, says الغاسق, he says, الغاسق هو ظلام الليل لأن ظلام الليل تخرج فيه الوحوش والسبع فأنت تقع في خطر تستعيد بالله من شر هذا الظلام وَمَا تَحْتَهُ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْمُؤْذِيَاتِ So then the Shaykh says, Al-Ghasiq, he says, it is the, the darkness of the night, as we read in the ayah, the darkness of the night. And he says that because the darkness of the night, what comes out from that when the darkness appears, you know, uh, when the darkness kicks in and it's dark around us, then with that, you know, you see, you know, the beasts come out, predators come out, and uh, you know, this kind of, you know, these, these sorts of things, you know, evil things that, you know, you could be harmed by. So, you know, you, you, you're in great, you're, you're in potentially grave danger from harm. So, you, as Allah is telling us here, you seek refuge with Allah from this evil, the evil of, 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 of the darkness of the night. And, you know, whatever of it is within, it, you know, from what it carries of harm. As some of the examples the Sheikh has given. So then the Sheikh moves on to the next ayah and he says, وَمِن شَرِّ النَّفَاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ وَهِيَ الصَّوَاحِرُ فَاسْتَعِيدُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الصِّحْرِ وَأَهْلِهِ لِأَنَّ الصِّحْرَ شَرَّ عَظِيمِ لِأَنَّ الصِّحْرَ شَرٌ عَظِيمِ So then the next ayah, so it says, and from the evil of the witchcraft, when they blow in the north. So from the, and from the evil of the uh, the ones who perform witchcraft when they blow in the knots. That's the type of magic where they they blow in the knots and say things and spit like light split in the knots and stuff like that. The sheikh says, and and these are those magicians and, and those people who perform this magic, and so you seek 
refuge in Allah from the magicians and its people and you know seek refuge uh, uh, with Allah from that evil and the evil of them because of course the evil of magic is is, is great I mean the evil you know uh, you know it, as, as we know um, you know it's an evil force and, and the amount of things and the troubles and the fitna and all sorts of things that it can cause so uh, therefore you know Allah says to us you know seek refuge from those who blow in the knots i.e. you know the magicians and its people and then the shaykh says uh, and we, let's just carry on not only the topic and then the last ayah and then the final verse and from the evil of the envier when he envies and uh, then the shaykh he says al hasid what does al hasid mean he says al hasid huwa alladhi yatamanna zawal al ni'ma an al ghayr idha ra'a ahadin ni'matin fa innahu yaghtaz wa yatamanna zawal hadhi al ni'ma hasadan wa baghyan wa liyadu billah wa huwa min a'dham al khisal al madmumah li anna fihi so then the shaykh he mentions al-hasid and he says al-hasid and that is the envy isn't it you know the one was hasid envy al-hasid and he says it is the one who wishes who wishes and hopes for but wishes that some somebody's blessing ends so wherever Allah's blessings that person's, you know, that's descended upon that Allah's blessed upon him, the person looks at it and you know, whatever it might be, and he wants it to end. And and for example, if he sees upon a person, you know, a blessing, for example, then it enrages him. His chest he gets enraged by it and he wishes that it ends. And the Sheikh says that. Uh, that this person, of course, is 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 um he goes you know uh, he goes we seek refuge with Allah from from this kind of person the the envier um, of the evil that he carries and these he says these are the greatest he says these are the uh, the greatest traits or we would let's we would say these are the lowest of the lowest kind of traits that somebody can have characteristics that somebody can have because obviously in it is something that you know the person is actually going against what Allah has bestowed upon a person from his many uh, blessings and so the person in effect really if you think about it is going against the qadr of Allah so whatever Allah has preordained and ordained for somebody to have from blessings then the person's actually got a problem with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you think about it and ponder over it and he said and this is an evil you know that the Sheikh says <coughs> to the other creation. So, like for example, you know, somebody has a nice car. Somebody starts hating on him. You know, somebody's been given wealth or some uh, kind of trade or whatever it might be, and people start hating on them. Somebody's got a nice house, starts hating on them. You know, these kinds of things. And um, obviously, the Sheikh says that this is from the uh, lowly type of traits and characteristics that somebody could have, and uh, quite rightly so. So then the Sheikh he continues and he says. وَيَدْخُلُ فِيهِ الْعَائِنِ أَلَذِي يُصِيبُ بِنَذْرَتِهِ لِأَنَّ لِصَابَةَ بِالْعَيْنِ نَوْءٌ مِنْ الْحَسَدِ فَأَنْتَ تَسْتَعِيدُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ هَذِي الشُّرُورِ فَدَلَّ عَلَى أَنَّ الْإِسْتِعَادَ إِبَادَةٌ لَا يَجُوزُ أَنْ تُصَرَّفَ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ فَلَا تَسْتَعِذْ بِالْمَخْلُوقِ وَمِنْ اسْتِعَاذَ وَمَنْ اسْتِعَاذَ بِمَخْلُوقٍ فَقَدْ أَشْرَكَ بِاللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَالنَّبِيُّ صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول لعبد الله بن عباس رضي الله عنهما وَإِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَفِي قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ So let's just stop there for a second because we're moving on to the next surah. So uh, that the Sheikh is going to explain. So then the Sheikh he says, and he says, what uh, is under this uh, heading as well with regards to uh, the envier is the one with the evil eye you know as we hear the evil eye the one who looks with the eyes and and uh, because of his vision and looking at his eyes he hates something or he dislikes it uh, that somebody's got something and he wants it to end 
and this is what they call al ain uh, uh, and as as we say in our language nazar lagi as i say in urdu or in punjabi no now now so our language say nazar yeah and this is a type of hasad as well it's a type of envy so then the sheikh says so you you know you seek um refuge with allah from these evils so then obviously demonstrates to us that al istiada seeking refuge is a worship from uh, from the types of worship and it is not permissible that this type of worship is uh, aimed at other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so therefore whoever whoever asks uh, or seeks refuge with other than allah then is committed a greater shirk which uh, means that is all his deeds are nullified and he commits kufr and is upon him to seek repentance if he realizes what he's doing and to then you know uh enter the fold of islam again if that's if he realizes so the sheikh says therefore you know you need to make sure that when you seek refuge is only with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the sheikh mentions a, a hadith uh of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh said to abdullah ibn abbas radiyallahu anhu said idha istanta fastain billah so if you uh, sought to uh, seek uh a refuge or seek aid or, or help sorry seek aid or help so he said seek aid from allah and likewise you know seek refuge from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then the sheikh he continues and he he says wa fi qawli ta'ala qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas so now the sheikh is going to move on to uh, surah an-nas and he will do the tafsir of surah an-nas as well so we'll go through that with him as well so he says وفي قوله تعالى قل اعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس اله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس امر الله عز وجل بالاستياده برب الناس ملك الناس اله الناس هذه كلها اسماء وصفات لله عز وجل وفيها انواع التوحيد الثلاثه توحيد الربوبية وتوحيد الألوهية وتوحيد الأسماء والصفات. So then the Sheikh he says he mentions Surah An-Nas and as we read the ayahs, so if we go through the meaning of that, say I seek refuge with Allah, the Lord of mankind, the King of mankind, the God of mankind, the Ilah of mankind, from the evil of the whisperer, devil who whispers evil in hearts of men, who withdraws from his whispering in one's heart after one remembers Allah. who whispers in the breasts of mankind of jinn and men so then the sheikh he mentions that and, and from the meaning of the the the, the translation of of uh, the meaning of that of those ayat and so he says that allah commanded allah azawajal commanded us with seeking refuge with the lord of the people the king of the people how the of the meaning allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sheikh says all of these uh, names uh, and attributes they are all names and attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also he says within this surah as well from the benefits of this surah he says within this surah are the types of tawhid the three types of tawhid and so he mentions them as as, as i think we did we went through these uh, through this uh, early on in the book but the sheikh reminds us and he says tawhid al rububiyyah wa tawhid al uluhiyah wa tawhid al asma wa sifat so the tawhid of allah's lordship and the tawhid of worshiping allah you know and and his worship as in only directing worship towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the tawhid of his names and attributes so then the shaykh continues and he says istaid billahi wa bi hadhi al asma'i wa al sifat istaid billah min sharr al waswas wa huwa shaytan amma al waswas fi al kasri fa huwa mastar waswas yuswis wa amma al waswas fa hadha ism min asma' shaytan li'annahu yuwaswis lil insani wa yukhayyil ilayhi wa yakhil ilayhi wa yashghaluhu min ajli an yulqiya fi qalbihi ar-ru'b wa taraddud wa taraddud wa al-hayra fi umurihi khususan fi amri al-ibadah fa inna shaytan yuwaswis lil insani fi al-ibadati hatta yurabis alayhi salatu aw ibadatuh ثم ينتهي به الامر الى ان يخرج من الصلاه ويتأ... و... ويعتقد انها بطلت 
أو يصلي ثم يعتقد أنه لا غير وضوء أو أنه ما قام لكذا أو أنه ما فعل كذا ويصبح في وسواس وسواس ولا يتمئن إلى إبادته. So this is quite important. Let's pay attention to this that the Sheikh mentions. He says, so he says, so seek, uh, seek refuge with Allah by His names and His attributes, by His lofty names and His attributes. Seek refuge with Allah from the evil of the waswas. And he says the waswas is the shaitan. He says as for al-wiswas with a kasra. So just pay attention to the words. Al-waswas is the shaitan. And al-wiswas. Then he says that al-wiswas is from the verb. Waswasa yuwaswisu. So the shaykh says as for. So, so that's the actual action of. Uh, whispering, yeah, uh, wiswas, yeah. So the Sheikh says, "Wa amal waswas." He says, "Al waswas." Then this is the name from the names of the shaitan. So these are uh, some of the, is a name from the different names the shaitan has been given, because he whispers uh, to the people, to the insan, uh, and you know makes makes them you know doubt and gets them busy with these whispers that he whispers in you know. Uh, whispers to them and makes them busy with that in order for uh, them, you know, in order for their hearts to be become full of doubts and to be, let's say, shaky, not clear on what what they're doing, and uh, and in a situation where you know they uh, they're just not able to function, and 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 like and the likes of this, the sheikh says especially in the affairs of worship. He says, for indeed, the shaitan, he whispers to the insan, to the people, yeah, to humankind, with regard, in the ibadah, during the ibadah, for example, up until what the, the, from, from the types of worship that the, that the slave of Allah is doing, it becomes difficult, it becomes unclear, it becomes hard. For example, the shaykh says, he says, then the person, he stops with that affair and he'll, for example, exit from the Salah when he's praying, believing that the Salah has, his prayer has been falsified for whatever action or whatever that whisper that he's heard and he's contemplated on. Or, for example, his prayer, um, he believes that uh, he, he, was, he isn't actually upon wudu and he actually might be upon wudu and the shaitan whispers to him and says, oh, you know, you haven't got wudu. And then he, and then he's, you know, he breaks his salah and he goes to do wudu, and he's, you know, it could be like that. And and other than that, and other actions, uh, and so the the person isn't content and isn't at peace with what he's doing. He's always in a state of, um, uh, uh, he's in a problematic state, in a chaotic kind of state. You know, as you see, you probably heard stories uh, from others, or maybe heard it from people, or even at first hand, where. Um, you know, certainly I have uh, one example here that's relevant is where uh, uh, somebody, uh, it was a 14, 15 year old uh, boy, you know, wanted to do wudu. He's doing wudu. His mom was complaining that he wouldn't get out of the bathroom. He kept on doing the wudu over and over again, over and over again, thinking that he hadn't done it properly. And he would spend half an hour to an hour at a time in the bathroom. Things like this. Other doubts, you know, that have, you know, there's also other types of things that will come in your mind, you know, up until the shaitan will say to you, or, you know, uh, who created this and who created that, up until the point he'll say to you, who created Allah, you know, and the, all of these kinds of doubts that will come. The shaykh will, uh, the, uh, the, the shaitan will try to uh, offset you from your religion and make it a misery for you to carry out your acts of worship, you know, so some of these examples, but there's many out there. You know that the shaitan comes with to the people. So then the shaykh says, he says, "Fallahu jalla wala atana adawa lihad al khatar wa dalika bi an nastaida billahi min shari had al waswas, min shari had al waswas." So then the shaykh says, and so Allah jalla wala gave us a dua, a, 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 a treatment, a dawa, a treatment for this, uh, um, or a cure. For this uh, uh, danger, and that is to seek refuge. That we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of the waswas. 
from the evil of the whisper that was was the shaitan. So then the Sheikh moves on and he explains what khannas is. Yeah, for, so from the same surah, he says al khannas. So he says al khannas, al yatakhallaf wa yabtaid. Fahuwa yuwaswisu ida ghafalta an dhikrillah wa, wa yakhnus ay yatakhar ida dhakarta Allah azza wa jal. Fahuwa uh, waswas al ghafla wa khannas in the dhikri azza wa jal. So then the khannas is a, a different type. And the Sheikh says the khannas, it, it means to delay or to go far away from something, to be delayed or be distant from something. And he says it is a whisper that if um, you are heedless of the dhikr of Allah, if you don't you know, mention Allah, if you don't remember Allah, if you don't pray, you don't do these things that are to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then um, if you don't do that, then you'll get you'll get this al khan al khannas yeah al khans yeah you'll get this al khannas that the whisper that is a type of whisper that uh, that occurs uh, when the person is far away from the dhikr of Allah the remembrance of Allah but when you remember Allah subhanahu wa taala and you and you for example you might say subhanahu wa taala you might say subhanallah or you might say a'udhu billah you know and you do the dhikr of Allah like that and you ask Allah and you mention Allah then this whisper goes away. And that's what Al-Khannas is. Uh, is. And it's slightly different to your normal type of whisper, yeah? So the Shaykh mentions that there. Then the Shaykh, he says, Alladhi yuwaswisu fi sudurin nas min al jinnati wan nas. So let's go to that ayah. So he says, Alladhi yuwaswisu fi sudurin nas min al jinnati wan nas who whispers in the breast of mankind of jinns and men. So then the Shaykh, he says, كأن المعنى والله أعلم أنه هناك موسوسون من الجن ومن الإنس يوسوسون للناس يأتون الناس ويشككونهم فكما excuse me فكما أن للجن شياطين يوسوسون فكذلك للإنس شياطين يوسوسون فأنت تستعيد بالله من شر القبيلين. So then the Sheikh says. From the ayah that already says, uh, Allah knows best, but from what's apparent from the meaning, to, for, from his understanding, and his tafsir of the of the of the surah, he says that, uh, for example, there is those who whisper from the jinn and mankind. So you have the shayateen of the of mankind and jinn, of both. So you know they, they, they so they come so the so the shayateen of man of, of men, they whisper. By whatever they say to the people to put doubts in them uh, and to, you know, uh, as I explained earlier in terms of what the jinn do as well, then the Sheikh says in terms of the uh, mankind as well doing that from the shayateen of mankind doing the same kind of actions in spreading doubts amongst the people, taking them far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, trying to cause them trouble and, uh, you know, trying to take that tranquility and peace away from them and to make their life a misery uh, when they are trying to carry out the Worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so then the Sheikh says, so therefore in this ayah that, you know, Allah says that you, you seek refuge from both types, from the shayateen of uh, the whisperers of mankind and the jinn as well, both of them, yeah? So then the Sheikh, he continues and he says, And then there's a, just a short hadith here mentioning the same thing that the Sheikh has just mentioned as well. And the Sheikh says, Ay, هاتين سورتين فينبغي للمسلم أن يقرأهما في أدبار السلوات ويكرر ويكررهما ويقرأهما عند النوم مع آية الكرسي وسورة الإخلاص. So then the Sheikh says, I that you know you you read these two surahs, uh, you know, so for the Muslim it's important that he reads these two surahs uh, at the end of every uh, salah and uh, he repeats them. Uh, you know, before he goes to sleep, uh, and also the Ayatul Kursi as well, uh, including the sur- uh, Surah Al Ikhlas. So um, that's what the Sheikh concludes in that paragraph, and then he continues. He says, "Yakra o Ayatul Kursi, wa Surah Al Ikhlas, wal Mawwidatain. Yakra o huma, dubra kulli salatin, kulli salatin, wa yukarir huma salatin baad al Maghrib." وبعد الفجر وكذلك يقرأهما عند النوم من أجل أن يبتعد عنه الشيطان فلا يكتر عليه نومه ويزعجه 
bil ahlam. So then the Sheikh says, you know, that you read them after the prayers. Uh, and he mentions here, you know, you read the, the Surah Al Ikhlas and uh, Al Muawwidatan or Al Muawwidatain. And Al Muawwidatain refers to whenever you hear that word, it's referring to Surah Al Falaq and Surah Al Nas. And so he says, read the Al Muawwidatain and read Surah Al Ikhlas. Uh, uh, you know, um, read them uh, at the end of um, uh, the uh, at the end of every prayer. Uh, you know, after after Maghrib uh, and after Fajr. So you know um, uh, the Athkar of uh, As Sabah and Al Masa. So the 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 um, uh, remembrances that we remember by uh, or, or say uh, after Fajr and uh, after Asr before Maghrib. And there's a book, uh, Hisnul Muslim, Portraits of a Muslim, which if you don't have, you can download on your phone. And it's worth having and you can get a hard copy as well, small little book you can put in your pocket. And that's got all the uh, remembrances in there, specific to what the Sheikh's mentioned here and others as well, which will help you in your daily life and your affairs of your daily life. So it's uh, worth getting that if, you're, if you don't have this or have never heard of it before. It's worth buying this book or downloading it on your smartphone if you have one. So then the Sheikh, he says, Ashahidu. Uh, uh, من هاتين السورتين أن الله أمر بالاستعادة به وحده فدل على أن الاستعادة بغيره من الجن أو من الإنس أو من أي بخلوق أنه لا يجوز لأنه لأنها نوع من أنواع البادة. So then the Sheikh says the point being that the point that we see and that we learn from these two two surahs that we've been reading and the Sheikh has explained to us is that Allah سبحانه وتعالى has commanded us with um, uh, seeking refuge uh, in him or, or by him, yeah, uh, alone. Uh, and so it demonstrates to us that the alistiada, this seeking refuge um, uh, with other than him, from whether it be the jinn or the mankind or anything from Allah's creation other than those two as well, anything it can be, uh, if it's other than Allah that you're seeking refuge with, then it's not permissible because it's a type from the types of worship. And so if anybody does that, and sort of moves away from uh, seeking refuge with Allah and points this is seeking of refuge to anything else other than Allah, then he has committed the greater shirk in the fold of Islam and his deeds are nullified. So then the shaykh continues and he says, Alistigatha. So sorry, at the start of the lesson, I was mixing up the two words. So uh, I, was, I was mentioning Alistigatha. Uh, um, by, by, by mistake earlier on which you corrected so just to mention again um, so then the sheikh he says al-istighathatu and he says wa dalilu al-istighatha idh tastaghithuna rabbakum fastajaba lakum surah al-anfal verse 9 so al-istighatha is seeking help so this is what I mentioned earlier on seeking help so it's like isti'ana but different so isti'ana is also seeking aid and assistance and help but this is also seeking aid and assistance and help but the difference here with the alistigatha is that when you're in a dire need or a dire situation, this is specific to that. So uh, the Sheikh mentions the proof for alistigatha. And he says, Surah Al-Anfal, verse 9. Let's read it all. Remember when you sought help of your Lord and he answered you saying, I will help you with a thousand of the angels, each behind the other, following one another in succession. If tastaghithun, yeah, from the same uh, word, alistigatha. Yeah. So the Sheikh says, he 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 says, or rescue, probably a better word to use, maybe rescue, the situation to be rescued. Uh, so he says it isn't, except with, uh, in a, when a person is in a dire need. Uh, so if a person fell into, um, into a, a, a severe, a dire situation, for example, then, you know, he uh, requests this uh, help or rescue from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and I be rescued from this calamity this severe calamity that he's fell into, whatever it might be. So then the Sheikh says, he says, وَالِسْتِغَاثَةُ عَلَىٰ نَوْعَيْنِ The alistighatha is of two types. 
he breaks it down. He says, "A noel awal, the first type, al istighatha tu bil makhluki fi ma la yaqdir alayhi illa Allah azza wa jalla wa hada shirk fa man istighatha bi ghair Allahi min jinnin aw insin aw aw ghaibin aw amwat fa in hada shirkun billahi azza wa jalla." He says, "So for the first type is when you're seeking aid and rescue with with uh, 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 by asking the creation of Allah subhanahu wa taala." So uh, you're asking the creation for help in that which they're actually not capable of actually helping you or getting you out of that situation. Except Allah is only the one who can do it in that situation. So if it's like this, then the person has committed shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shirk akbar. So then the shirk says, so whoever seeks help and rescue from other than Allah, uh, whether it be a jinn or, um, or, or from a person or from somebody who is not there and uh, not present, or from the dead, dead. So indeed, this is shirk with Allah Azza wa Jal Shirk Akbar. So this is particularly just to make sure that we understand it is to do with when somebody seeks help from and from the creation that is not capable of actually executing that rescue for you or carrying out, and only Allah is able to do it. Similar to Istiana from last week, yeah. And then the Sheikh continues and he says. فَالِسْتِغَاثَةُ بِالْأَمْوَاتِ وَبِالْغَائِبِينَ مِنَ الشَّيَاطِينَ وَالْجِنِّ هَذَا شِرْكُ بِاللَّهِ زَوَّجَ So then the Shaykh clarifies again and he mentions, he says, so seeking aid and rescue from the dead and from the uh, the non-present, the people who are not present, uh, whether they are from the uh, shayateen or the jinn, uh, uh, etc. This is shirk with Allah Azza wa Jal. Shirk Akbar takes you out of the fold of Islam. Then the Sheikh says the second type, a noel thani, al istigatha tu bil makhluk al hadir al hai, fi ma yakdiru alehi hada jais. So here's the difference now. So then the Sheikh said the second type, it is seeking aid and rescue from from one of the creation types of creation uh, who is present, who is alive, and who is capable of executing that task. You know? So uh, the Sheikh says this is permissible. So the, what are the conditions for that? is that the person is present, the person is alive, and the person is capable of actually doing it, yeah? Of helping you, or rescuing you. Right? So then the Shaykh continues and he says, قَالَ تَعَلَى فِي قِسَّةِ مُوسَى فَاسْتَغَاثَهُ الَّذِي مِنْ شِيَعْتِهِ عَلَى الَّذِي مِنْ عَدُوهِ Surah Al-Qasas verse 15. So let's go there, Surah Al-Qasas verse 15. And if you read the whole ayah, and he entered the city at a time of unawareness of its people, and he found there two men fighting, one of his party, his religion, from the children of Israel, and the other of his foes. The man of his own party asked him for help against his foe. So Musa, Moses, struck him with his fist and killed him. He said, this is of shaitan, Satan's doing. Well, he is a plain misleading enemy. So then the Sheikh quotes the ayah of uh, uh, Musa al-Islam in that situation. It was, is there, present, and able to help. Right? Right? So that's clear for us. The same thing with the, somebody's injured in the road, somebody had an accident, uh, they're stuck in their car, you know, uh, somebody calls a fire brigade, they come, they come with their tools, they're the present, they're capable, they've got the tools, and they're alive, and they obviously uh, cut the metal, cut the doors open, get the person out of the car. You know, in that situation, if the person needs rescue, that's permissible because it fulfills those three conditions that the Sheikh mentioned. Yeah? So then, uh, let's continue. Then we move on to Azabh. Aksamuhu wa daliluhu. Azabh. The Sheikh says, what is Azabh? He says, uh, and Azabh is sacrificing, yeah? So sacrifice. And he says it's a, of four categories. So the Sheikh says, its evidence is, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِ وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ from Surah Al-An'am, verse 162. <coughs> so let's go there. Surah Al-An'am, verse 162. Say, O Muhammad Sallallahu Verily my prayer, my sacrifice, my living and my dying are for Allah, the Lord of the Alameen, mankind, jinns and all that exists. So that's the evidence from the Quran. And also from the Sunnah, وَمِنَ السُنَّةِ لَعَنُ اللَّهُ مَنْ ذَحَبَ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah curses the one who sacrifices to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is cursed. And of course, whoever does that commits shirk al-akbar as well. 
Likewise, yeah, because it's from the types of worship. So then the Sheikh mentioned that it's for four types. So let's break that down. He said, Al Awal, Adab Hala Wajhi Takarub wa Ta'adim li Ahadi li Ahadin Ma Wahada Laya Juz illa lila subhanu wa ta'ala li anahu mina li badati il maliya maliya falaya juzu dhab lil jinni wala li shayatini wala lil muluki wa ru asa ta'adim lahum li anna hadihi ibadatun la ta juzu illa lila as the wajal. So he says that the first a type of sacrifice is a sacrifice uh, uh, in order to get closer and to, to, to magnify somebody, something, and to get closer to it. And the Sheikh says that this is not permissible except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala only. So that, that this type of dhabh, of getting close, seeking nearness, and uh, magnifying something is we magnify Allah and seek nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through, through sacrificing for him. Right? This is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whoever does it for anybody else, whoever it might be, right? From the creation of Allah, then this is impermissible and it is shirk al-akbar. Yep. Then the shaykh says, فَالَّذِينَ يَذْبَحُونَ لِلْجِنِّ مِنْ أَجْلِ السَّلَامَ مِنْ شَرِّهِمْ أَوْ مِنْ أَجْلِ شَفَاءِ الْمَرْضَى كما يفعله الكهان والمنجمون الذين يدعون العلاج ويقولون للناس اذبحوا كذا لاجل شفاء مريضكم ولا ولا تذكروا اسم الله عليه هذا شرك اكبر مخرج من المله وهذا الذي قال الله تعالى محذرا من فعله لغير الله قل ان صلاتي ونسكي ومحياي ومماتي لله رب العالمين so then the, the sheikh just clarifies further as we mentioned in the other paragraph, that, that, you know, you don't, if whoever sacrifices for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for whatever reason, whether it's to repel an evil, or whether it's to gain some kind of blessing, or anything, anything else, and if somebody commands them, like from the, uh, the charlatans, and the soothsayers, and the astrologers, and all these types of people who are, are fall into magic, then, then this, all of it, Whoever falls into this, whoever does it, whoever goes to them and follows what the instructions and all of that that's connected to it, then these people they they fall into shirk akbar and they are they leave the fold of Islam and their deeds are nullified, go go down to zeros, nothing, they, and they uh, are declared as kufar up until if they realize their mistake, then they ask Allah for forgiveness and they enter the fold of Islam again. You know, uh, making sure that they don't fall into these errors. That's it for the people who've realized. <coughs> also, there's a uh, the uh, the Sheikh mentions the ayah again that we read at the top of the page. He also mentions the uh, ayah from Surah Al Kawthar, and he says, "Fasalli li Rabbika wanhar." So pray to your Lord and sacrifice for Him, yeah, and sacrifice as well for Him, though. And you know, sacrifice for your Lord, as the Sheikh mentioned. And then the final point. Let's finish this. Should give us should take about five minutes, inshallah. Then we move on to uh, uh, another, but we'll just wait because we still have to complete the other three types. So the first type is clear now, yeah. The first category of uh, sacrifice. The second one, the Sheikh says, "Athani al-zabh min ajli akli laham hada la baasa bihi lnahu ma ma zabh." ما ذبح من أجل التقرب والتعذيم لأحد وإنما ذبح لحاجة والأكل منه فهذا لا بأس به لأنه ليس نوعا من الإبادة ويذبح لبيع اللحم So then the second type is where somebody sacrifices uh, an animal you know it may be a sheep or you know whatever uh, that's halal to sacrifice uh, in order uh, to eat the meat and the Sheikh says that there's no problem there's no issue with this because it is a, a sacrifice uh, in order it's not a sacrifice in order to seek nearness to somebody or to magnify somebody uh, rather it is uh, for a need it's a sacrifice that's for a need and that is to eat the meat for eating or for example uh, you know selling the meat for example so there's no issue with this because it doesn't fall into the types of worship that we mentioned in the first type yeah a thalith the third one الذبح على وجه الفرح والسرور بمناسبة زواج أو مناسبة نزول مسكن جديد أو قدوم غائب أو ما أشبه ذلك بجمع الأقارب ويذبح من باب إظهار الفرح والسرور بما حصل له أو بما حصل له هذا لا بأس به لأنه ليس فيه تعذيم لأحد 
ولا تقرب لأحد وإنما هو من باب الفرح وسرور في شيء حسل أو في شيء حسل so then the sheikh says the third type is for example sacrificing you know uh, whatever it might be sheep you know uh, a calf a cow um, you know any uh, from from what's halal and um, uh, upon uh, upon uh, uh, or because of happiness or uh, you know being happy uh, with for example it could be as example of being happy in the situation would be like a wedding somebody's got married family members got married uh, um, or for example um, you know somebody has uh, bought a new house or something and uh, they're celebrating you know that for example you know the you know out of happiness or because uh, somebody who has been absent is on their way to them is returning to them maybe a uh, person went on Hajj Umrah and you know they're on their way back they haven't seen them or it could be a guest you know who was not there was on their way and making their way to them and and other things that resemble that as well the sheikh says that this um it, 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 there's no no uh, issue because it's, it's because of to do with happiness and it because of being in a pleasing matter that's appropriate of what has been obtained or sought or what's happened so there's no issue with that and the sheikh says that because it doesn't fall it doesn't fall under the magnifying or seeking nearness to something that that's not there so therefore it's not worship and so it's permissible to do and it doesn't um, negate uh, uh, any of those principles so then the sheikh says rabia the fourth uh, type uh, of sacrifice and says azab min ajli at-tasadduq bil lahm ala al-fuqara wal masakin wal wal mu'zin wal wal mu'zin hadha ya'tabar aw ya'tabar sunnat sunnah wa huwa dakhil fi al-ibadah so the fourth type the sheikh says for example sacrificing uh, me you know to uh, to uh, give charity uh, give the meat to the um, the poor and the disadvantaged and the destitute and those who are in poverty. There's no. It says this is considered a sunnah, and it uh, and it is and it is uh, it is from uh, uh, the types of worship. Yeah, because you're doing sadaqah, Yeah, so with that, you know, if Allah subhanahu wa taala and obviously you're giving it to the poor people, you're fulfilling, you know, a noble and righteous deed. Yeah. So then the sheikh moves on to another. So this is the last point. Another, so a vow, you know, making a vow. Another, and its evidence is, يُوفُونَ بِالنَّذْرِ وَيَخَافُونَ يَوْمًا كَانَ شَرُّهُ مُسْتَطِيرًا so, uh, Surah Al-Insan, and if we go to this surah, Surah Al-Insan, towards the end of the Qur'an, and read the translation, uh, the meaning, uh, they are those who fulfill their vows. And they fear a day whose evil will be widespreading. And so the Sheikh he says another, he says, Hua ilzam al insan nafsu bi shayin lam yilzimuhu lam yilzimuhu bi asli shara. Ka an yandira an yasum au yandira an yatasad bi kada fa yilzimuhu wal wafa bi nadrihi di kholin nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man nadra an yuti Allah fal yuti'hu. Wa nadr noum min anwa di bada la yajuzu illa lilla. فَمَنْ نَذَرَ لِقَبَرٍ أَوْ سَنَمٍ أَوْ غَيْرِ ذَلِكَ فَقَدْ أَشْرَكَ بِاللَّهِ يَزَّ وَجَلْ وَهُوَ نَذْرٌ وَهُوَ فَهُوَ نَذْرٌ مَأْسِيَةٌ وَشِرْكٌ وَقَدْ قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَمَنْ نَذَرَ أَنْ يَأْسِيَ اللَّهُ فَلَا يُؤْسِهِ أَوْ يَأْسِهِ So finally we finish on this point um, about um, uh, vows and the sheikh he says that it is sticking is when a person sticks uh, makes himself stick to a thing for example, uh, 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 which is not from uh, the Sharia. For example, the Sheikh says, for example, he vows to fast a certain number of days. Uh, that is not obviously from the Sharia directly, but he's obviously we know that fasting is a type of worship. But he says a vow. Or for example, he vows to um, uh, he vows to give charity to to some organization to somebody, whoever it might be. He vows to give it. And it's a it's specific to him, yeah. And so uh, the sheikh says that, uh, and so it's upon that person to stick to what he's vowed with and to complete that vow, uh, and 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 carry it through until he completes that what he's vowed. And uh, in terms of the uh, of what the Prophet ﷺ said, that whoever vows that he uh, is obedient to Allah, so then he should be obedient to Allah.
As in, complete the vow. You said the vow, you stick to it, you got to finish it. And the scholars say that whoever breaks a vow, right? Um, whoever breaks a vow once they made it is a major sin. So, uh, and then the shaykh says, so so therefore a vow is a type from the types of ibadah. And it's not uh, it's not permissible uh, except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's, it's impermissible for other than Allah. Yeah, so vows are made to Allah. So you vow with Allah. The vow is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. So whoever does it to other than Allah, whether that's a grave, it's an idol, or from the from the types from, from the creation, then he has committed the greatest shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leaves the fall of Islam and his deeds are nullified. Yeah. And then the the Shaykh finishes off with in this chapter, he says, and the Prophet uh, said that whoever vows that he uh, that he is a, a, a disobedient to Allah, then he should not make that vow. So if if a vow involves disobedience to Allah, then he does not uh, make that vow and does not carry it out. So that concludes our lesson. Alhamdulillah uh, today, and inshallah we'll uh, uh, meet again next week. Bismillah ta'ala. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa tubi ilaika. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.